Okay, I'm just going to share my screen here. Can everybody see that okay? Okay. Well, welcome everybody to our first Chamber Lunch and Learn of 2022. Uh, normally, we are the facilitators of this and not necessarily the speakers, so this is a little bit different for us, but we are uh, happy to be uh, chatting all things Chamber with you guys, and thank you for your interest in um, learning more about our organization. If you've ever attended one of these in the past, um, pre-COVID, I should say, they were held in person, but we've just switched to virtual um, for the time being and until further notice, and that still seems to work for quite a few people, and it's nice for us to record them as well. So um, you should have seen a little warning that this is being recorded, so hopefully that's all good for you guys. We will share the recording with you afterwards as well. So today we are going to chat about who the chamber is exactly, why we exist, or in other words, our mandate as an organization. We're going to chat about what we do, and lastly, uh, where we actually do it from. Because actually, lots of people don't know where we are. <laughs> uh, if you have any questions any time throughout the presentation, you can feel free to type them in the chat box. Um, you can also raise your hand if you want, but um, being on presentation mode, I can't always see see the reactions right away so um, chat box works or whatever you're comfortable with um, we'll do our best to answer them during the presentation and we can answer questions at the end as well if they come up later we um, want this to be engaging so definitely don't be shy we want to chat with you and, and hear back from you In terms of who we are, so these are our uh, core five staff here at the Chamber of Commerce. We have actually quite a few staff, but to keep things simple, these are the core five. Um, so obviously in the front here is myself, Marley Henney. I'm the Office and Chamber Services Coordinator. So what that kind of means, well, I think I have the longest title of everybody. <laughs> what that means is um, essentially I handle the communications for the Chamber, our online presence essentially of any kind. Um, chamber events and membership services. And then next we have Heather Bits here, who's also here today with us. She is our executive director and oversees all of the departments of the chamber. Next in the yellow here is Kathy Little, who oversees our support services uh, division. Heather will kind of explain that a little bit better uh, in a few more slides. And then we have Debbie Shinor here, who is our uh, friendly face at the Visitor Information Center and World's Largest Dinosaur. So she's our visitor, or sorry, tourism services manager. And then lastly, we have Trudy Green, who is our bookkeeper. And I will pass it over to Heather to explain how our board of directors works. Excellent, thank you, Marley. Um, so yes, here we have our Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors. Uh, the Chamber is governed by a volunteer Board of Directors. Uh, currently we have 11 directors, but our bylaws do allow us to have 12 elected members and one appointee from the town of Drumheller. So our president um, currently is Martina Morrison with Riverside Value Drug Mart. Vice president is Deanna Hannum with Dinosaur Valley Massage and Wellness. Secretary Treasurer is Lisa McGee with ProPlan Financial and the Cooperators. And our past president is Jeff Hall with Myers Norris Penny or MMP. Our directors at large uh, right now are Mike Bell, Christine DeMille, Brandy Schneider, Bob Shetty, John Schoff and Shannon Wade. And our appointee from the town of Drumheller is Councillor Lisa hansen Zachra. And I'd also like to just note, uh, because it's timely and coming up, that our annual general meeting will be held near the end of March. So at our AGM, we will elect uh, new directors to our board. And typical board terms are three years in length. And we will have, um, at minimum, four three-year terms up for election. We're just sorting out um, that because we do have some vacancies. Um, but there will be at least four three-year terms up for election this year. 
And to be eligible to serve on the board, uh, just know members must be in good standing, which means that your business membership must be paid in full no later than January 31st of each year. So you have until Monday um, next week to um, have your membership paid in full, which would mean you would be eligible to serve on the board of directors if you so choose. And if you are interested in serving on the board of directors, please let me know and I can provide you with some additional information regarding board of director expectations. Uh, next slide, Marley, please. Okay. So here we have um, some diagrams showing our, our timeline and our structure for the organization. So the Drumheller and District Chamber of Commerce um, has had a long history of serving the Drumheller business community. The origin of our chamber dates back to 1919 actually. Previously, we were named the Drumheller and District Board of Trade. Our organization then transitioned to the Drumheller and District Chamber of Commerce, what we are today. Um, that change in name took place back in 1968, December of 1968, actually, when we were um, federally incorporated under the Boards of Trade Act. And then another key date in our history uh, was the opening of the world's largest dinosaur in October of 2000. So the Drumheller and District Chamber of Commerce has four key departments. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce ultimately is a membership-based organization. Uh, we're a nonprofit comprised of businesses, organizations, and individuals who are committed to building a strong business community. We are not connected to the town of Drumheller, which is a common misconception. The Chamber is focused on providing, as, mem uh, as Marley mentioned, uh, services to our members who pay an annual membership fee to belong to our organization. And Marley will get into those greater details about the services that we um, provide our members later in the presentation. Next, uh, we have the world's largest dinosaur attraction and gift shop. And uh, just a small note about that, uh, pre-COVID, uh, we welcomed on average 125,000 visitors per year uh, to the attraction. And then uh, located alongside the gift shop is our visitor information center, which provides a valuable service to the thousands of visitors who uh, come to Drumheller each year. Our VIC is endorsed by the town of Drumheller as the community visitor information center and is open year round like the world's largest dinosaur and gift shop. And our last department, uh, which we mentioned um, Kathy Little is our support services manager. So our support services division has been in existence since 2000, 2003. It was established solely to contract with the government of Alberta to provide staff in various areas of the Royal Trail Museum. So basically we act as an administrator to provide payroll services in exchange for an administration fee. And next slide, please, Marley. Okay. So here is our mission and vision statement. Our mission statement focuses on four pillars, uh, those being promotion of local business, awareness of membership benefits and the Drumheller and District Chamber of Commerce, advocacy on behalf of our members at the local, provincial and federal levels, and providing opportunities for our members to learn, share and network. And our vision statement, the Drumheller and District Chamber of Commerce supports and engages businesses in making the Drumheller area a vibrant and diverse community. And next slide, please, Marley. So I'm going to talk a little bit about advocacy now and what advocacy is. Um, so as a Chamber of Commerce, one of our key roles is to advocate on behalf of businesses to help promote a stronger economic climate. We do that in several ways, whether it's drafting policy resolutions, sending letters to government or surveying businesses and then providing feedback to government on various uh, topics. Our chamber has advocated locally to the town of Drumheller on a variety of uh, topics, including most recently the fireworks bylaw. Uh, we've also provided input and direction feedback uh, to the town on the mobile vendor bylaw, the downtown area revitalization plan, derelict buildings and the municipal purchasing policy to name a few. Our chamber is also members of the Alberta and Canadian Chambers of Commerce uh, networks. Um, so they also advocate on behalf of businesses to the provincial and federal governments. And at the provincial level, we attend the Alberta Chambers of Commerce AGM and participate in their policy committee. 
uh, as well. In 2020, uh, just to note, we partnered with the Grand Prairie and Cold Lake Chambers to submit a policy resolution on electricity distribution and transmission fees. And although the policy was not adopted by the members of the Alberta Chambers of Commerce at that time, we are currently working with those chambers again and hoping to resubmit a revised policy for consideration at the 2022 Alberta Chamber AGM. So uh, stay tuned for further details on that. And at the federal level for the past two years, we have participated virtually in the Canadian Chamber AGM, where like the Alberta Chamber AGM, policy resolutions of a federal nature are put forward to the membership for consideration. Throughout COVID, the Canadian Chamber has been active on a number of fronts advocating for business with regards to financial business support programs, rapid testing programs, and more recently, um, we've noted they've spoke out on um, truckers and vac vaccination requirements. So uh, a lot of uh, activity at the, the provincial and, and federal uh, chamber networks. And so just to note, if your business does have any issues with regards to any government policy, uh, whether it's at local, provincial or federal level, we'd like to hear from you so we can uh, work with you to try and help uh, find, a find a solution uh, to some of the challenges that you're, you're currently facing. So please feel free to reach out to us, um, give us a call, send us an email, uh, we'd be happy to hear from you. And Marley, please uh, move to the next slide. Thank you. And uh, this just to highlight some of the advocacy in action. So on the left, there's a photo from the Alberta Chambers of Commerce AGM, where delegates are voting on the proposed policy resolutions uh, that are submitted by Chambers of Commerce from across the province. And then uh, the image on the right is just a note about when it comes time to municipal or provincial election time, the Alberta Chambers of Commerce puts together their Vote Prosperity um, campaign, their platform. So Vote Prosperity is the Chamber's uh, network's nonpartisan and non-candidate specific platform of business priorities um, to support shared long-term prosperity in communities across the province. And of note as well, uh, your Chamber of Commerce, um, when election time does come, we also um, host election forums um, for the local uh, municipal government elections as well as provincial and federal. So we're active uh, at that level as well. So that is the end of my slides. I think we're going to pass it back to Marley. Thank you. Thanks, Heather. Okay, talking about chamber events. So that's probably been the biggest change for us in regards to um, the pandemic. Pre-COVID, our chamber did a lot of events, probably about one per month, actually at least one per month, I would say, and lots of committee meetings. Um, Pretty well, all of our events that had a, a registration fee or a ticket fee of some kind, we did provide a chamber member discount. So members always paid less to attend our events. Um, generally members could, or non-members could attend most of them anyways, though, just for a higher fee. Um, and of course, uh, COVID kind of made it really difficult to host the majority of our larger events, but we did still host an AGM each year. We've kept up with our lunch and learns, as I mentioned, um, just transitioning to doing them virtually. Um, our awards event is uh, since 2018, we've been doing that um, actually in partnership with the town of Drumheller, the local Rotary Club and Travel Drumheller. So that is um, the celebration of excellence if you've heard of that event. Uh, we present six awards at that event and the other organizations um, present a variety of numbers of awards as well. And so that's a nice, um, a uh, celebration event for the whole community and we are hoping to um, bring that back this year and have it in June. So fingers crossed that that can go ahead as planned. Um, our Women in Business Mixer is a popular annual event that we host um, during Small Business Week each year. So that's the third week of October. This photo to the right here is actually um, a photo from the last in-person Women in Business Mixer that we had at the Canalta Jurassic Inn. So we are looking forward to the day when we can do um, all those things in person again, but uh, just doing virtual as much as we can in the interim. And our Jingle Mangle is uh, another popular chamber event. Um, it is a members only event. Uh, it's our appreciation mixer that we host um, in the start of December each year. And a lot of our members say that that is actually their favorite event to attend. 
like everybody else, we had to shift quite a few directions uh, the last couple of years um, for obvious reasons. As I mentioned, losing um, a lot of our larger events to COVID, uh, that was not ideal for us financially, but it was um, a beneficial in the sense that we we got really focused on business supports. Um, we, we got a lot st stronger at that, did a lot more business outreach and helping businesses, um, for example, navigating the never ending um, COVID, informa uh, COVID restriction information. We had to decipher that and help explain that to businesses quite often. Not so much as of late, but in the first um, year and a bit, I would say when, when there were changes more often, we also, um, helped businesses make heads and tails of the financial aid programs and figure out which ones they could apply for, how to apply for them, et cetera. So we, we stayed busy with that for sure. And that was something that we, we helped every business with regardless of membership, because we just wanted to um, help the, the business community as a whole, as much as possible throughout all of this. Um, from the end of March, 2020 to roughly early June of that year, we did maintain a, a status of local businesses list on our chamber website. And so that was a way for the community to be able to see um, the status of, of businesses in town, if they were open, closed, open with restrictions. Um, so we did that for quite a while. Um, and we increased our communications as well. We went from one chamber newsletter a month to doing them every single week for a while while there was so much information to, to pump out essentially. Um, now we're doing them every other week because there it does there does seem to be quite a bit of, of stuff to share with, with businesses. So we got good feedback that that was helpful to have that communication from us every other week. We were involved with the town of Drumheller's emergency response um, during the state of local emergency. Um, one big thing that we did there was to help distribute items to businesses. So if you remember when the plexiglass shields first started coming up at businesses and the uh, stickers on the floors for spacing and posters, all that stuff, um, we acted as a essentially a distribution center um, to get help businesses get those items. And I. I don't remember the exact count, but I want to say there was over 80 businesses that came to get those items. So that was um, that was definitely great to be involved with too. Uh, virtual lunch and learns, like I said, we switched to virtual for that. Um, in the summer of 2021, all chambers of commerce across the whole country were able to apply for shop local funds from the federal government. So we did that to launch seven different projects. So we uh, stayed busy with that since the summer of 2021. Those projects were um, our, our rounds of Mission Possible, if you saw that on social media with the spies and their uh, activities. Uh, Chamber Cash, we launched our Chamber Cash program, um, which is essentially a local gift certificate program. Um, our customer service superstars promotion that was in the fall. What am I forgetting? Oh, shop local bags and chamber market. Um, chamber market is a e-commerce initiative that was launched by the Alberta Chambers of Commerce. And so we so far have helped about 11 businesses get onto that so far. And, and we're working on helping a few more. So we are involved in that too, to help businesses sell products and services online. Uh, in the fall of 2021, we started uh, also offering rapid test kits. So that is a program, again, with the government, uh, the government of Alberta this time, where we can distribute rapid test kits to businesses that are willing to um, kind of participate in a weekly testing program with us. And another, um, well, something really positive and fun from 2021, we did a lot of ribbon cuttings. So COVID has, has been rough on a lot of people, but we've also seen some some highlights the last year, uh, two years. I think we did about six ribbon cuttings last year, and there were more than more businesses than that that opened up. So it's not all been bad. <laughs> and yes, while we did have to make a lot of changes um, as a chamber of commerce, and we're not able to offer all of the same services, um, particularly with our larger events. I um, just want to point out that a lot of our stuff has stayed the same. We've still been here advocating for businesses. Um, we actually, since the start of the pandemic, we have met with the Alberta Chambers of Commerce Network. So that's chambers from all over the province. We meet with them virtually every single week to share uh, what's going on with local businesses, share concerns. Sometimes we talk with ministers. Um, so we are still advocating for businesses. It's just not always headline news. Um, we've always offered value-added programs. I'm going to get into that in a second. We've always been promoting local businesses. 
We've always been operating the world's largest dinosaur and visitor information center. And we also um, take care of the little church here and we are heavily involved with the Dino Arts Association. And I'll explain those um, in greater detail in a couple of slides here. So when I say value added programs, these are um, savings programs or other kinds of benefit programs that chamber members can access with their membership. Um, these are just a sampling of them. Um, there's always at least 15 that we can offer. These are the most popular. So our, for sure, our most popular is the Chambers of Commerce Group Insurance Plan. Um, that is exclusive to Chambers of Commerce. That's why it's called that. We have um, about a third of our chamber members are utilizing that plan right now for health and dental benefits for themselves and their staff. Um, these three over here, sorry, I didn't even ask Heather, can you see my pointer? Okay, so these three here, um, these are our um, credit and debit processing programs. Elevon is the newest one. Um, we've got shipping programs. Um, those are also fairly popular. Um, two fuel programs here, ESSO and Petrocan, and we've got PayWorks and ADP for payroll services. And um, Peninsula has HR supports and other similar business um, services. So again, lots of them. These are the most popular. I didn't want to spend too much time talking about this. Um, these are kind of the cherry on top of the Sunday, I think, when it comes to chamber membership benefits. They're great to have. Um, uh, to, because they can help you save um, money. And we have some members that actually save enough money with these programs that their chamber membership, it, it evens out. So the amount that they save is, is what they pay for membership or more. So we love to hear that. So going into how we help businesses promote themselves, the opportunities, how they can promote themselves. As I mentioned, and as Heather mentioned, we operate the Visitor Information Center one of the only um, VICs in, or one of the few VICs in Alberta that is open year round. So our staff are always um, ready to uh, help promote all of our local businesses, regardless of chamber membership, actually. Um, we provide a free listing on our online directory. So all chamber members can be listed there with links to your websites, contact information, et cetera. We do a lot of business referrals by phone and by email. Um, some other fun things that we get to do if someone's having a convention here a lot of times they'll come and talk with us to get information on caterers and places that their um, convention attendees can visit um, stuff like that so we we like to promote businesses that way and sometimes when work uh, comes to town like large companies come to town for projects they'll ask us for local contractors and restaurants and other information so we love doing that Shop local promos, I kind of chatted about that already. Those are just um, the shop local um, programs that we run that is to promote businesses. We don't really make any money off of those ourselves. Um, outsourcing, so what that means is that we, as a chamber of commerce, we have a policy that we use chamber members first or they get first priority essentially if we are looking to purchase a product or service, we will use chamber members first or, or go to them first for products and services. Chamber events, a lot of our events have promotional opportunities at them. Uh, here's a picture uh, over here from a, a golf tournament. So you can see we've got a bank sponsoring that. That's That was a fun day, that one. Chambermarket.ca, I mentioned that already. That's another opportunity for businesses to promote themselves on, uh, on e-commerce um, platform. And Chamber Market is fairly new. It is a e-commerce uh, site just for Alberta businesses. And this photo here is a ribbon cutting that we did last year at Precision Beauty Creations. So ribbon cuttings are another fun uh, promotional thing that we offer. The Little Church, a lot, uh, a lot of folks don't know this, but we um, own it and we essentially manage it. So we take care of it. We get it fixed when there's um, vandalism or other things going on there. Um, so that's it's ours. <laughs> that's our little church and we look after it. Um, we handle wedding and ceremony bookings at it as well. We used to get about two to three a year, I would say. And the last couple of years, there's been a huge increase. Uh, 2020, we had eight bookings there. And 2021, we had seven. So we love to see the little church get used for fun stuff like that. And yeah, we actually have a security system out there as well. So we uh, take care of that. The Drumheller Dino Arts Association. So 
Little Church and Dino Arts, those are those are things that you wouldn't normally see a Chamber of Commerce really get involved with or manage themselves, but we are a unique chamber in many ways. Um, so if you've seen, of course, you've seen the little dinosaur statues around town, there is a little over 30 of them. They are owned by the Chamber of Commerce and we insure them. And then the Drumheller Dino Arts Association is a nonprofit group of volunteers that looks after them. They are tied to us because we own the dinosaurs. Essentially, um, Dino Arts was set, up, was set up originally as a committee of the chamber and then it kind of went off on its own to get nonprofit status so that they could apply for grants and whatnot. Um, and so we provide administrative support and bookkeeping to them and some annual funding. And in turn, they and I, um, I'm their administrator, we um, make sure those dinosaurs get fixed and painted up when they need to. And we assist with some fundraising efforts too. And lastly is where we actually are located. So we are located at the foot of the world's largest dinosaur, or Tyra, as we call her now. She was named in 2020 at her 20th birthday. Uh, so we are, the chamber offices are at the back of the building that's attached to the big dinosaur. We have the visitor information center and the gift shop in the front. And then our, um, Heather and I, our offices are at the back of the building, kind of just facing the, the aquaplex and the skateboard park. Um, as you can see there, our phone number on our website. And if you need anything at all from us, feel free to reach out. I left our um, contact information there. Um, and yeah, that's, I think, the gist of it, Heather, if you if I've missed anything. No, it's great. I think you covered off everything that I didn't and um, probably a lot of information thrown at everyone. But does anyone have any questions? We'd be happy to take questions um, and answer anything that we may have uh, run over too fast. Or, or if, you, if something else has come up that you have a question about, um, please uh, don't be shy. Everybody's quiet. Um, you can Valerie's type in. Thinking. Yeah, Valerie's thinking that she might have a question. She looks like she might have a question. <laughs> no. <laughs> I feel like I went through that pretty quickly, so maybe she's studying it all so can. <laughs> Andy has a question here. Um, okay. he, he says he knows it's too early to say, but um, is a spring expo on the plan? Um, Officially at this point, no, um, but we've talked about um, we've talked about it and, um, you know, with everything COVID related and, you know, thinking about the way I think that uh, consumers are um, conducting business with businesses or doing their shopping, I think has changed a, um, in the last couple of years. So um, there's a number of factors to, that play into that. Um, the trade show is a big production. We had looked at doing um, one outside last year um, in conjunction with the farmer's market, which is held downtown um, throughout, throughout the summer. Um, so we had looked at opportunities to partner there and it was something that was in the works, but then with, with the restrictions, we um, backed away from it. So. It, it, it's definitely on the back burner. It's not um, off the table, but we don't have any definite plans to have it um, this coming spring at this point. But we have been throwing around ideas of some other ways that we can um, provide more networking opportunities and, and promotional opportunities for businesses to, like business to business um, promotions and, or networking, I should say, not promotions, that kind of stuff. So we've been um, throwing that idea around a little bit. We had tried, um, I guess it was December of 2020 and then January of 2021. We kind of threw it out there to try a couple virtual networking um, sessions, just laid back, no schedule um, or itinerary, just kind of um, open up the floor virtually. Um, didn't get a lot of feedback our interest at the time but we could try that again if folks were interested or you know small networking groups um it's not the same as a trade show but opportunities to connect with folks anyways the other comment i guess going back to the trade show and i do see andy has another comment there that i'll speak to as well um you know with with the trade show in the past um you know when we started it our initial hope was to encourage local business involvement and um while we did have some local businesses like yourself, Andy, there was lots of others that came from out of town. And 
um, you know, especially with last year and our shift to more of a shop local uh, focus, we spent a lot of time and effort um, focusing on our businesses that we have here to, to promote them and um, help boost their businesses. So um, we know from experience, we couldn't run a trade show purely on locals, but, um, you know, hard to, um, hard to do it without that outside um outside vendors coming in as well. So just some, there's a lot of factors in, in, in considering um, moving forward with the trade show. So um, hopefully that answers your question. The other comment I see you put in there about the plaza downtown. And yes, that, that's a town matter, but um, we, as I noted, uh, were, uh, I was uh, um, a member of the downtown area revitalization plan. Um, advisory committee. So when that plan was getting put together, um, I was involved in that as were other business owners and members of the community. And uh, one of the things that um, obviously came out of that plan or was part of that plan uh, was the plaza. And um, it was obviously in the media and, and uh, publicly announced that the town did get funding from the government for the provincial government to uh, redevelop a plaza in a new location. So um, it was supposed to be done by the end of December. That funding um, that they had, were getting from the province, um, they were able to get it um, an extension on that. So they were allowed to defer it into this year. I don't know what the new deadline is, but they did get approval to push it into this year. So the plan to uh, create a new plaza space um, in the public parking lot behind the Royal Bank, um, Pizza 249, um, in the downtown, that's where the new plaza will uh, be going. And um, shortly, um, that uh, project will be put back out to tender um, because if you follow town council, you will note um, this past fall, they put the project out to tender, but um, it came well over budget. So um, they've had to go back to the drawing board, scale the design back a bit and make some changes. And hopefully this time around, they will get quotes um, that fit with the dollars that they have available from the province. But I also know they are applying for other um, federal government grants. Um, I think it's the Canadian Revitalization Fund, I think is the one they're currently working on. And um, so if, if they're able to secure more dollars for that project, um, that, will, that will help them out as well. Anything else? Okay, well, if there's no other questions, um, again, we posted how you can get a hold of us after if something comes up. Certainly don't hesitate to reach out to us, um, but it's just after 1230. So it looks like we're giving you back half of your lunch hour. So um, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. And again, thank you for your time. Uh, we appreciate it. And uh, we'll send out the recording of this uh, after as well, if you wanna go back and uh, listen to something again. Oh. Uh, you're welcome, Candace. Thank you. Oh, yes. Um, before we leave, I just thought I'd mention to you our next Lunch and Learn topic. So that will be February, I'm just looking at my calendar, 23rd, same time, um, and then it'll be virtual again. Um, we won't be doing all the talking next time. We, um, we'll just be facilitating again, but we have a, um, a uh, what would you call him, an expert um, who's going to be talking about Google... Google business profiles and how to make the most of your Google business profile to help boost um, awareness of your business. So registration link for that is accessible on our website, or I can email you the details on that if you want. But I, th I think that's going to be really interesting too. Um, I love to brush up on all that stuff. So check that out if that's of interest. Okay, thanks again. And I'm going to stop recording. <laughs>